Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, creative director, and principal designer of The Lifestyle Co. And I'm Kylie Ray Seberg, the senior design director at The Lifestyle Co. And we're gonna do a little sit down with you guys today. We haven't done a sit down, just you and I. I know. Like talking about, or like anything. I mean, yeah. I feel like we're always in videos together. And you know Kylie very well from our YouTube channel, but Kylie, as she mentioned, is our senior design director. She has done with us for five glorious years. And one of the questions we get asked most often on YouTube, and then we both get asked separately mm -hmm. in our DMs all the time, is like, how'd you get started in design? People ask me all the time, how did you find Kylie? How did you find some of your senior team? Um, like, did you go to school? Mm -hmm. How do I break into design? You have my dream job, which of course it is such a dream job. And I personally feel so lucky that we get to do our jobs. I know Kylie does too. And I feel so lucky that I found myself a Kylie. And, and so many other of our employees, I feel like, um, it was kind of chemistry, right? And, yes. and like right place, right time kind of brings everything 100%. together. So we've got Kelly, say hi Kelly. Hi. Our director of marketing here. She's gonna ask us some questions that you all have asked us over and over and over again on YouTube and social media. How did you get started in design? Um, gosh, I'm gonna try to give you the short answer. So we're not here for like an hour and a half. Um, the Cliffs Notes are: I went to fashion school. I dropped out of college. I dropped out of college. Went to fashion school. Dropped out of fashion school. School is not my thing. Uh, but learned enough to be dangerous. Have always been very, very creative. Uh, moved back to Arizona. Bought a house. Started a blog. Blog turned into: You're such a great blogger. Can you come help me pick pillows? Pillows turned into furniture. Furniture turned into: I should try to give this a go. Left my corporate job six months later and um, the Lifestyle Co. has been a thing for 10 glorious years now. So um, honestly, I started my own business because no one would hire me <laughs> because I had no design experience. So I had to kind of start out just like, you know, from the very beginning at grassroots. The blog really helped give me the confidence to know that I did have natural design talent, which I think is very important when you're trying to see if you have a go or you know you can give it a go in design. Um, so I started this company never imagining that I would have a Kylie next to me or our team of over 50 people now. Um, but in, in design, I think natural talent is a really big one. So I'm self-taught, I learn the hard way, I ask a lot of questions, I keep my eyes open, I'm logical and smart, um, like most of you are, I'm sure. And so I feel like for me, it, it was my destiny for sure to, to take everything I learned in fashion school and translate that into becoming an interior designer and learning from the ground up. <laughs> Hi, how did you get started in design? Um, so when I got started in design, I was working four different jobs. Um, I didn't go to school for design. That's a question I get asked all yeah. the time. So I do not have a degree. I went to school for nonprofit and special events management. She did not drop out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't drop out. I did graduate with my degree and I did plan events for a local nonprofit for two years out of college. Um, from there, I was in kind of a trying to figure out what I liked, so I just got a bunch of jobs. So I was doing four different jobs, and one of them, I was a spin instructor. So how that relates to design, how you ask? Well, I had this really crazy student in my class, my Friday noon class. That I know, I know. <laughs> how, how, we all, we all want to know how the hell I made a Friday spin class. Yeah, that would never happen now. I mean, <laughs> let's just say things were very, we're going to tell you a hundred times, things were very different five very years different. ago. This, this would have been like six years ago, because yes. you've been with us for five years. Yeah than they are now. <laughs> so I was teaching my spin classes and she was always in class and I just remember like the lights would turn off and she'd be like, <laughs> like what is that? And they're like screaming and like all about it. And I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> so I started following her on Instagram. And back then I actually, I think I remember, like I think you had like 12,000 followers, which even really? back then was like a lot, oh goodness, like, right. you know. And um, I started following you and seeing what you were doing out there and just connecting. I remember you were, flying to like Jersey and I think you posted like a and a and I asked for a black paint color. Yes, yes. And you sent me like the black paint color. I'm like, Sure, Ooh. Williams Tricorn Black. Yes. I remember it. Yes, I painted one wall in my yeah. guest bedroom at my yeah. old house that. Um, and I was like, okay, like we're buds. Like we're, we're talking on Instagram. So then she'd posted a few weeks later or whatever that they were hiring for a junior project manager. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Like, I don't, I have no idea, but like, I want to apply. So I messaged her and I'm like, is it too late to apply? And she's like, well, we have 47 applicants. So if you're going to apply, you should apply now. And what did I say? She said, I'm going to be the 48th. And I was like, I like her. <laughs> I think something you did so right from the beginning is you put yourself out there in a normal way. Like, don't psycho DM me. Like, it, people still do that. Like, yeah. the, I, 
<sighs> you get it. But Kylie, like you, I could see her personality. One, taking your class obviously was like, again, divine. And like, I just loved your person, your, your energy and your personality. I had no idea if she was working at West Elm at the time in retail. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, once I got to know her a little bit more, I'm like, oh, okay. So she's working at West Elm retail. She, I know is personable. I know obviously you're, you look the part and you're beautiful and amazing and smart and talented Thank and you. all the things. <laughs> so that was like an, uh, you know, obviously, but I just loved how you were confident, but like, the fact that there were 47 other people that applied for this job that she had no experience in and she wasn't intimidated by that, that one sentence of I'm gonna be your 48th was like, okay, let's go. She like, still remembers it to this let's day. Let's see it, I totally do, yeah. So I think making sure that you, you leave some sort of normal impression <laughs> is a good thing. Yeah, no stage five clingers yeah. over here, no stalkers. Then from there, um, your office manager at the time interviewed me, she reached out, and I actually don't think I ever had an interview with no, you. No, I literally, how the, <laughs> I didn't interview her, like, what? Yeah. I don't think so either. I think I mean I, I had someone from my team interview you, yeah. but the team the team of two at the time. I think it was literally or like yeah. whether it was like four of us, maybe. Yeah, and Melly. But yeah, yeah. But and <laughs> no one was interviewing. And some people who no longer. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah. So there's um, probably like four or five people in the office. Yes. And then I think I had the interview it went great. I think I like thought I got the job. I wasn't sure. And then like literally like three months go by, and I'm like. So do I keep working my four jobs? Do I quit? Do I not? Like I was also doing real estate at the time with yeah. my dad. My dad's like, "What's going on? What are you doing?" So um, finally, one day I get a call from. I this think I text you like, "Hey, are you free or something?" Yeah, I would. And never, then I think I, I don't called, call. I don't just call anybody. I think I called you, and you happened to be. Um, I had toilet. to pee. Well, I had to pee. No, she literally calls me. I had to pee. And you guys, we worked in an office. This like literally, how it is I could days. like flush the toilet. Yeah. It was that close. My office like was that close. And I was like, hey, I really have to pee. And you like when you're with a girlfriend, I just like felt so comfortable with you automatically. Like we just meshed. And I was like, I have to pee. Like you're gonna hear my pee. Do you care? And she was like, no. And I was like, okay. Do you want come want to work for pennies? <laughs> That's literally what I said. Yeah, I said I'm gonna change your life. I'm gonna change your life. Are you ready for this? Um, I'm gonna give you the opportunity of a lifetime. I'm gonna hire you for this. Are you ready? And she was like, yep. When, when do I start? Yep. Right? Yeah. 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 And then maybe started like another month <laughs> after that. Um, Things were slow moving back then. <laughs> I finally had a first day and I got hired as part time. Yeah. She forgot oh, that yeah, I had my job at West Elm and that I was only supposed to work three days a week at the Lifestyle Co. <laughs> So like every day, hey, where are you? Like, why aren't you in? Like, you know, like yeah. you're supposed to be here at eight. Which is classic me, by the way. Like, I'm not a micromanager at all. So <laughs> I'm like, hey, where are you? Like, I'm generally asking, like, where are you? I figure you're somewhere. I told you to go. That I, whatever. And she was like, no, I'm at my other job. And like, I was like, I'm off today. Oh I'm not shit, even you have another job? Like, <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I told you, I'm part time. I'm like, okay, you're gonna need to quit that. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna need you. Are you in or not? And she was like, yeah, yes, I've been waiting. Like, yes, yeah. I'm full time. Yeah. So that lasted about two weeks. Yeah, literally. Um, and then I went full time. Yep. And from there, I was a junior design associate. Yep. Longest email ever. Mm -hmm. Um. Junior, at the lifestyle co. At the lifestyle co. Com. Junior design associate at the lifestyle co. Com. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. <laughs> really fun. <laughs> then that? I got design associate. Yes, then you were just design ass. Yep. Um, and then from there I became a lead designer. No, then you were you were design associate, then you were a designer. Designer. Then, then a lead, lead, then a senior design director. Yeah, now senior <clears throat> design director. Yeah. And let's talk about I know you're not getting asked this very many questions, Kel. But um <laughs> you guys are my job really easy. I know. The, Can you guys tell that we like to talk? Yeah. <laughs> this is how it is all yeah, the time. Literally. Well, no, because now we don't work in the same office, yeah, which is how true. we can actually get work done. Sometimes yeah. we don't even talk all day. I hate it. No, no. But we can't work in the same office because we can't get any work done. <laughs> um, but uh, what I was gonna say is so how did you because I know people are gonna be like, okay, I'm stuck as a design assistant. What do I do? I've been at my firm for three years, they're not noticing me, like, what am I doing wrong? Kylie, we were under the gun on design. And back then, so this was five years ago, I was the only person that was actually designing. So I was creative director, which what was I creatively directing at the time? I don't know, just trying to keep the place afloat. But we didn't have, re no, we did have retail. Yeah. We already had retail. Only retail had been, Friday and Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was wearing a lot of hats, but I was also still the only person designing. So as the principal, I'm designing and I needed help designing and we were definitely underwater. So I think I le we left, I think you did it over the weekend, right? I think so. Did we left work yeah. Friday and like we literally had a design presentation like Wednesday or something and I had n barely anything done. And I come back to work on Monday and I open the file for the actual design for this client. I don't remember who it was. Um, the co-ops. Oh my God, was it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, their bedroom. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. And we love them so much. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I come back on Monday and I open the file and there's like a completed design. I literally think the design fairy like rescued me. It was Kylie. <laughs> she went, I, I was like, I literally was like, one too many glasses. Did I do this? I'm yeah. like, I don't remember this. And Kylie's like, hee -hee, 
like over there, like, you know, looking at me and I'm like, you did this? She's like, yeah, is it good? Do you like it? And I was like, yes, it's so good. And it was so good. So like without being asked, she went in, she saw what needed to be done. She paid attention to the budget. You read the client questionnaire. Like she did exactly what she was supposed to do. And I didn't ever even have to ask her or tell her. And at that moment I was like, this is my girl. She's going to do this. She's, she's got the talent. She's got the skills. Um, and I think from there you were design associate for like five more minutes. And then I was like, can yeah. you please take projects? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? And, yeah. then, and then we did. Yeah. Yeah. We jumped right in. Mm -hmm. cool thing. Yeah. I'm fucking laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say to someone who is in your same position, but wants to get into the industry? Ooh, now it's a slippery slope, mm -hmm. but I will tell you <clears throat> for our firm, I don't require a design degree. In fact, I just hired someone who does not have a design degree. They have a degree, but they don't have a design degree. And I don't even know that I'd be that, like I'm not that stringent on having a degree. I mean, how could I be? I don't have a degree, but I think if you don't have a degree and you didn't like cross that line and check that box, you need to have some really strong skills and a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. doesn't even necessarily mean design related things, but like you need to be a very strong old person. You need to present yourself well. You need to have like a lot of other things pretty dialed in. I feel like if you don't have that. So as with all things right in life, it's a juxtaposition of, um, if you don't have a design degree, you have to have technical skills. Yes. You have to. Like Kylie knows, she would not have gotten hired today, honestly. Oh, I because even with my experience today, if I went somewhere else, which I would never, but if I tried to go somewhere else, they'd be like, oh great, you've been in this industry five years, you don't have skills? Like, yeah, N I neither mean, one of us are technical. I have skills, but. So, yeah, yeah, you have other skills, right? So I, I, I feel like we both have had this conversation many times where like, because of the timing of the company, and I own the Lifestyle Co. Kylie's an employee, she's our senior design director as we've established, but we kind of all came up together in a lot of ways. And because of the timing of the company, we were able to handle everything aesthetic mm -hmm. and then hire out our technical component. Um, and so now we have all of that in house, but at the time it really worked. I don't think now that's very common. I think trying to find that would be way harder than just learning technical skills. Mm -hmm. So I think people always ask us what kind of programs, SketchUp. We almost exclusively use SketchUp. If you have AutoCAD experience or CAD or Revit, you should easily be able to pick up SketchUp. You can teach yourself on YouTube. Half of our team has taught themselves on YouTube, Literally. honestly, or gone to SketchUp school or something like that. Um, and then just regular um, programs like PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. Google. Um, all the Microsoft offices. Yeah, all, the, all those, um, Google Sheets, all that stuff. Yeah. Like you have to be really quick and fast in that stuff because the time that that you're not taking having to learn that is time that you can actually be absorbing all of the design criteria that you need um, I also think be prepared to start at the bottom you guys yes. I hate to tell you but like you're not gonna come in here and make make good money you're not yeah. gonna make any money you're starting at the at, at the, the bottom, bottom. Yeah. yeah and and unfortunately I mean that is where Kylie started and yeah. it's where I would have started but no one would hire me so like get yourself an interview figure out how to interview properly learn and we can talk about this too there is also a video um, out there already on YouTube where I talk about how to get hired at a, at a design firm where I specifically give my requirements on coming to the interview what to wear how to send a follow-up like all that stuff um, so nail all of those skills but I would say teach yourself technical skills and walk in knowing how to render a bathroom elevation and walk in knowing how to pull coordinates and um, that will set you apart and will hopefully at least for me it would it would allow me to look past maybe the fact that you didn't have a design degree because honestly design school I mean talk to people who have gone to design school they don't teach you a whole lot they teach you a lot about color theory that like you're never gonna use totally I know I'm sorry to burst your bubbles but yeah what would and you say you can't teach having a natural eye for things thank either. you yes like I think you you know if you can put put a room or a scheme together or mm -hmm. you don't. So I think a lot of challenges with with some people and maybe even people we've hired in the past is you're either like so technical but the design component doesn't come and yeah. if you can cross over both aesthetics and being technical like that's where like the true magic totally. happens. I also think lastly you have to live and breathe yes. design. Like I literally get DMs from people 10 DMs a year. Like I swear I'll get one every single month. We're like, oh, are you, are you hiring? And I'm like, go to our careers page. Like there's just like, there's just, everything is a clue, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a clue as to like, if I, if, if you were a self-starter, you wouldn't DM me and ask me for hiring. You would go to our website and look at our careers page, right? So there's like, there's always little clues and, and part of the clues for 
us as a hiring firm and, and as established design people is if you want this that bad, it would be really weird to not have a lifestyle that reflects design, right? Like both of our, every single person in our company, whether they're in marketing, whether even, even some of our warehouse employees, like they're wearing our merchandise. They love, they love Pinterest. They love design. They go to model homes. They, they're, they're buying books, like design books. They're reading the books. Like it's, it becomes part of your lifestyle. And I think very early on, I could tell that Kylie had that and, and everyone who works for us. You have to live and breathe it if, if you're going to supplement the fact that you don't have that, those technical skills or the schooling education mm -hmm. part of it. And like, it's within you. And that's what's also going to get you through because as yes. great and as glamorous as this is and how fun this is that we're mm -hmm. being able to sit here and talk on camera. <laughs> 15 is, minutes out of, yeah. This is not every day and the days are long. They are hard. They are so stressful. Pressure, like, a lot pressure of pressure. Is Millions freaking, of dollars yeah, like, of other it, people's money. It's high, especially now. Like the stakes yeah. are so high and these are, the people's biggest assets and their biggest, you know, it's your home. Like you never want to take that for granted that you get to be able to to work on that for someone right. and create and that work space. with a professional design firm. We're always talking about concierge level service. Like yeah. people come to us because we're the best and they they want the best. And so we can't be sleeping on like what you know what 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 they deserve and what they expect from us. Yeah, and if you don't love design, you're not going to get you're going to burn out days. You're going to burn out. It's you just you won't be able to last. So literally like. There are just, I remember like even when I first started, I, I like loved mm -hmm. you being did. at Target you did. at 8 p.m. at a night. Like, you you still install. do. Yeah, and I'm like, this is so fun. Like, and I still have that same feeling. So like, that's how I know that this is for me. And I know yeah. that you do and everyone else on our team feels the exact same way. Yeah, and ask yourself before you take yourself down this path, like, is that really me? Like have a gut check with yourself because you're gonna put a lot of time and effort into this whole thing called design, right? And if you don't have that like actual natural passion, um, it's gonna be disappointing for you because it's it's a it's a legit job, it's a professional job for a reason, as mm -hmm. we always say. Give us your final thoughts about the design industry and working in it and what you love about it. Ugh, it's the best yeah. job in the whole world. It really is. It's the best job in the whole world. It really, it really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, clients, they are so awful sometimes, <laughs> but for the most part, they are amazing. They are amazing and they like change our lives. Every single client. Mm -hmm. I like to say I do it for the design, but we do it for the clients. Like, totally. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, you are so close to people and we work together for a really long time. Like building these type of houses isn't fast. Um, sometimes we we're working with people for years and we finish a project and then they come they back buy another. Yeah. And then they buy another house. And so like you, you build this, like you're their person in design. And, and when they think, when our clients think of design, they think of us and they don't only think of me, which I think is so amazing. They think of Kylie, they, they, they name Kylie, they name Rachel, they name RJ, they name, we have our, our like builders and, and some of our clients naming our marketing team and our warehouse team and our logistics team and admin and all that. And so like it becomes such a family. And I think because you connect in such a personal thing in in homes um it's part of the reason why i don't work commercial like we've talked about doing commercial we'll, we'll do boutique commercial like mm -hmm. we've done a couple doc, docs offices and like some a co-working space and yeah. a salon and like we will but you for like the that personal yeah connection. The, the personal connection is what's so amazing and um i'm still challenged by design every single day oh yes we still make mistakes of yeah. course we do <laughs> don't anybody out there who doesn't is yeah. straight up lying to you we're human it's yes, a very complicated job um, we make mistakes, we make the most of it. Mm -hmm. We believe in the design gods very strongly. And like when something's out of stock, back order for a thousand years, we're like, okay, the design gods didn't want us to have this. Okay. Like let's let's let the energy open and serve us with what's next. Yes. Usually we're going to market around that time. We find something even better. Yeah, um, it all works out. Travel, like getting to travel, market, yeah. going to market. Mm -hmm. We work in, we've, we've had projects in like, gosh, now probably like 15 states. Yeah. We have a project in Whitefish, Montana. We have a project in Gaza, Gaza Ranch, Ranch in Idaho. Um, we have a project in Kentucky yeah. that we just signed that no one knows about yet, which yeah. we can't wait for. Okay. Um, we have a project in San Diego for a major high profile human that we love and his wife. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think, so much to come. yeah, the design community also, like you're gonna come across people who are jerks and that's in every single industry. Um, for the most part, I feel like the design community is really made up of great people, really talented individuals. Um, everyone's working toward a common goal. Supply chain sucks right now, probably will for the next like five years. So mm -hmm. um, I feel like we all kind of have that understanding too. Totally. And, you know? And I think design's more accessible than ever too. You can totally. get a design at any sort of price range yeah. at this point. Um, but what every design firm and 
and individual is able to offer you is what makes them all unique and different. Yeah, so, so true. I just think that we're such a great <laughs> yeah. team and yeah. what we offer is honestly just getting more seamless and like yeah. giving our clients an overall like just such a better experience with each project. Yeah, right. I think so too. And if YouTube, if you guys could please um, start harassing Kylie and tell her to please come back after she I'm has this baby. I'm coming back. <laughs> because all I want, uh, the team was already like, why don't you guys like end the video with asking what's next? I'm like, what's next? I just need Kylie to come back from maternity leave. So when <laughs> she has back. this beautiful baby, please send her the best baby juju and baby's gonna get here safe and sound yes. and she, you're gonna be the best mom. Thanks. And you're going to come back to work. I'm going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, YouTube, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.